On September 11th, 2001, Michael Hinkson and his guide dog, Rizel, were on the 78th floor of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. He ran the Quantum Mid-Atlantic office, managing sales and operations. His windowed office space overlooked the southwest corners of New York City. Rizel, a Labrador retriever, was his trusted companion, there to guide him each day. At the time, the pair had been a team for less than two years. Michael was born premature in 1950. He was blind, and his condition was irreversible. So, every day, while Michael worked, Rizel was perched comfortably underneath his desk, usually napping, but always ready for his direction. But that fateful morning, right at 8.46 a.m., a loud boom shook the building. When the aircraft hit the building, the building literally tipped. We were on the 78th floor, so they're very flexible, so literally it tipped like a spring would. A Boeing 767 American Airlines Flight 11 had struck the North Tower, cutting through floors 93 through 99 at a speed of 500 miles per hour. It was an instant inferno. My colleague in the office, David Frank, started shouting, oh my God, there's fire and smoke above us. We got to get out of here right now. And I kept saying, David, slow down. Because next to me was my guide dog, Roselle. Rizelle woke up, looked around. It was clear to Michael that she did not sense any immediate danger. What I observed was her reactions. She was sitting, wagging her tail and yawning and going, who woke me up? That told me that we could try to evacuate in an orderly way and panicking wasn't going to help. So Michael and his colleague walked their guests to the staircase, came back and swept the office for any stragglers, began making their way down the grueling 1,463 steps to safety. Most everyone who made it out was because they were below where the plane hit. And so, yeah, our people had a, a good start because they were out of the office and starting down the stairs by probably about, um, what, 8.48. Michael first met Roselle in 1999. She was his fifth guide dog. Though blind from birth, he says he never felt handicapped. He'd spent most of his life on the West Coast, but in 1996, he moved from Palmdale, California to Westfield, New Jersey, later getting a sales management job in the World Trade Center. With any new building he worked in, he made sure to become familiar with the environment, memorizing emergency exits, fire safety routes, and so on. When you go in somewhere and you deal with anything that you deal with, you do it from a standpoint of eyesight. So when you're in a building, if there's a need to evacuate, you look at the signs. Well, I know that that doesn't work for me. Signs and I don't get along very well. I literally would walk the halls and walk on the first floor between the buildings and inside and learn where all the kiosks were and all the shops were in the shopping mall, learn where all the elevators were. And I did that because it was as likely if there were an emergency that I would be the only person in our office. That all put me in a mindset that if something happened, I'm going to know what to do. And of course, that's what really happened on September 11th. Up in stairwell B that day, this very mindset helped him stay calm. His blindness, Michael says, was not a limitation. The airplane hit 18 floors above me on the other side of the building. What was there to see? On the stairs, no one knew what was going on. As a seasoned salesman at that point in his career, Michael had traveled hundreds of thousands of miles by plane. In the staircase that morning, he recalls the distinct smell of jet fuel, says that he remembers the air tasting like a shot of kerosene. As people filed into the stairway, it was a mostly quiet scene. They all kept to the right. There was no pushing. There was no shoving. And though they still had no idea what exactly was happening, they knew their best chance at survival was to move forward one step at a time. Michael says he tried to remain calm, maintained a strong grip on Roselle's harness. The dog does best when I give good, solid commands and sound confident. All the way down the stairs, the fact that I kept just telling Roselle, what a good dog, you're doing a great job, helped a lot of other people because... Um, they saw me just focusing and going down the stairs and being in charge of my situation. At about the 50th floor, Michael's colleague began feeling anxious, doubting whether or not they'd be able to make it out. I just said, stop it, David. If Roselle and I could go down these stairs, so can you. From that point on, David walked one floor ahead, sharing what he saw with the rest of the group as they made their way down.
By him doing that, he gave anyone within the sound of his voice something to focus on, to keep them from panicking. And I know that by him shouting up all the time, hey, Mike, 26th floor, somebody just opened up a water vending machine. We're going to be passing up water bottles. Whether they were below him or above him, they heard him and they heard him sounding calm. That had to help lots of people on the stairs. Michael continued his descent with the group of people from the top of the tower, getting closer to safety one flight of stairs at a time. Though tired, thirsty, and still in disbelief of what had happened less than 30 minutes prior, Michael, Rizel, his colleague, and their five guests all made it out of the North Tower alive. When they got down to the lobby, both were met by a nearby NYPD officer who warned the pair of the building's imminent collapse, instructing them to run for cover. As they ran, Rizel guided Michael through the dust-filled streets of Lower Manhattan, eventually ushering him to safety inside a subway station. She did exactly what she was supposed to do, that she stopped at the top of a flight of stairs that took us down into the Fulton Street subway station. He never let go of her leash. She never wavered from her job. Her job is to make sure that we walk safe. My job absolutely is to know where to go and how to get there. When the pair finally got home to New Jersey, it took some time to process what had happened that September morning. But when Rizelle's harness came off, she was a normal dog, just like that. We got home that night, and the first thing I did is I took her harness off. I was going to take her outside, but she was off like a shot to find her favorite tug bone and my retired guy dog, Lindy, and they started playing tug of war. She was done with her job. Dogs like that. They like to know what's expected of them. To this day, Michael says that Rizelle was one of the most easygoing dogs that he had ever known. She loved sleeping, walking, and her Nyla Bone toy. She played when she could and worked when she had to, and she always took her job seriously. Rizelle lived until the age of 14. She died in the summer of 2011, 10 years ago. She contracted a disease called immune-mediated thrombocytopenia, or IMT for short. Obviously on September 11th, there were toxins, and we think that that might have been the genesis. She lived a good life. Today, Michael is working with his eighth guide dog, a black lab named Alamo. He lives in Southern California with his wife, and until 2008, he worked for Guide Dogs for the Blind, the same organization where he'd met his trusted companion all those years ago. He's a public speaker now, a best-selling author, and works for Accessibility, a product that makes websites more accessible for blind people. He is their chief vision officer. Now, he lives his life trying to help others see his mantra. Blind people can accomplish incredible things if they're given the chance. Looking back, Michael says he's grateful for his four-legged guide dog, the one who kept him and others calm while guiding her human down 78 grueling flights of stairs. 20 years after that dreadful day, he reflects on 9-11 with a somber spirit and a grateful heart. I wasn't blinded by fear, and I use that term very deliberately because most people, when something unexpected happens to them or they um, have an, an unexpected life change event that occurs, they're afraid and they don't know what to do. They freeze. They're, they're blinded by fear. The reality is, I'm not going to tell you you shouldn't be unafraid. What I'm telling you is that you should learn to control your fears and use your fears to help you make better decisions rather than just letting them overwhelm you.